Welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, we have an example uh, involving simple harmonic motion and uh, energy in simple harmonic motion. And uh, specifically, we're going to have a mass bobbing up and down in a spring. So the uh, problem looks like this. We have a spring attached to the ground. And it is attached to a platform, which has a mass big M. Um, in this problem, we will be using uh, numerical values, so be ready. And from above, we're going to drop a mass of little m onto it from a height h above the platform. Okay? And um, assuming we have numbers for all these, oh, the spring constant, there's a spring constant k. Assuming we have numbers for all those, I want to find the following three things. I want to find uh, the max velocity of the two block system after the collision. I want to find the total energy in the system after the collision. And I want to find uh, the amplitude of the motion. So when this mass hits this mass and they bob up and down together, um, what's their amplitude? All right, so um, in order to do this, we first need to find uh, how fast this little guy is going when he strikes this mass. And then we're going to find how fast they're going together immediately after the impact. So for a little mass going from point A to point B, we're going to use conservation of energy. Uh, you could also use kinematics there too, but um, I'll use energy. So um, this velocity is zero. I'll call the velocity of this dude right before the collision, I'll call that V naught. So before I dropped, I had uh, gravitational potential energy. Right at the moment I hit, that's going to turn into kinetic energy. Um, so we've got little m gh equals 1 half little m. And we'll call that v naught squared. That's uh, the velocity right before the impact. Uh, m's drop out. You get v naught is root 2gh. Um, I'll give you some values here. Let's say big M is, um, I'll draw these down here. Let's say big M is 10 kilograms. Little m is 5. The spring constant is 1 kilonewton per meter. And um, the height it's dropped from, the little guy, is uh, 4 meters. OK. So now I can find v naught. I can actually get a number root 2 times 9.8 times 4. I get v naught. Now I went ahead and plugged this in for us. Um, you can check me if you want. Uh, I get 8.85 meters per second. So that's the velocity that little guy has right before the impact. How about their velocity of the two blocks immediately after the impact? Well, now we have two objects interacting. So when we have two objects interacting, we're going to use conservation of momentum. And that one's pretty easy. Um, I'll, do this, uh, I'll do this up here. The momentum immediately before that collision is going to equal the momentum immediately after. Beforehand, I had little m moving at v naught. There it is. Afterward, the two m's are moving together. So little m plus big M. And then I'll call that new velocity, I'll call it VA for after the collision. And uh, oh, this is pretty simple. 5 times V naught, 8.85 equals, these two add together is 15 VA. So VA is just a third of this. And so VA equals uh, 2.95. OK. Now, um, so now these blocks are attached. And at this moment, they're moving downward at a velocity of 2.95 meters per second. Now we're, we're going to kind of switch uh, to simple harmonic motion. Now, before I can answer the, any of these three questions up here, um, I need to know a couple things. I need to know, before the collision, how far was this spring already compressed? In other words, if this mass weren't sitting on here, this spring would be up here somewhere. So that would be here. Okay, so I'm going to find uh, that distance there. Okay, how, how far is a spring compressed with just uh, this big mass sitting on it? Okay, um, and uh, 
we'll call that X1. Okay. And by the way, for the spring, this is the equilibrium position of the spring. The spring wants to be up here. I put this big pat this 10 kilogram platform on it, now it's stuck down here. Um, so to find that, I would do um, an FBD of the big mass. We have KX acting up, that's the spring force. We have big MG acting down. Uh, this will be KX1. Uh, if that mass is stationary, I just set them equal. And if you set these equal and solve for X1, you get big MG over K, which is 10 times 9.8 over one kilonewton per meter is a thousand newtons per meter and you get x1 is 0 0.098 meters okay or uh, uh, 9.8 centimeters okay now in order to find v max after they've collided okay so they are going at, at the collision they're going 2.95 when do the masses reach their max velocity? Well, they reach max velocity when acceleration is zero. Therefore, the net force is zero. So basically, I'm going to repeat the same process, but now it's for the two block system. Okay? So I will do that here. So now we have our two block system. This is five and 10 kilograms. You've got little m plus big mg acting down you have the force of the spring acting up. Force of the spring is, e again, equal to kx. Now, I will call this, um, let's see, uh, xm for where the, the velocity will be a maximum. For that's, what, that's what the m is for. And that equals little m plus big M g. So x maximum equals, uh, that's 15 times 9.8 over 1,000, and the maximum x, um, well, the, the x at which the max velocity occurs is 0.147 meters, okay? Now, um, so that's a lot of preliminary information. We haven't solved what we're asking for yet, but we kind of need all that stuff to figure out what we're asking for. All right, so going back to our picture, If x1 is 0 0.098, and that's from here, equilibrium being zero, xm is here, and that total distance is 0.147, okay? At this point, that's where these two little guys reach their max velocity. That's where their acceleration is zero. That's where the, the net force on them is zero. So um, since I have all the information I need here, I'm going to use since the blocks are moving from here to here, I'm going to use conservation of energy, okay? At this point here, uh, the blocks have um, kinetic energy because they're moving. They're moving at 2.95 meters per second. The spring is compressed 0.098 meters, so uh, they have, there, there is elastic potential energy there. And um, I got to decide where I want to call gravitational potential energy zero. Uh, for convenience, I'll call this height equals zero. So at this point, the blocks also have gravitational potential energy. At this point here, okay, the blocks will be moving even a little bit faster. So they have kinetic energy. That's their max kinetic energy. Uh, the spring is compressed more, so it's going to have elastic potential energy. Um, but then I'm calling that H equals zero, so there's no gravitational potential energy. So... Um, this is method, and by the way, we're going to do this two different ways. This is method one, okay? So method one is to measure everything from the unstretched spring, okay? All right, so I'm going to erase this. So we'll call this method one. And we said at the, at the beginning location, the, the blocks had kinetic energy. So that's kinetic energy naught, okay? plus they had elastic potential energy, um, plus there's gravitational potential energy. There's no non-conservative work going on. As a matter of fact, there's not even any non-conservative forces acting on this system. Um, afterward, we have kinetic energy max uh, plus elastic potential energy um, at the max velocity place, so I'll call that M. 
Um, okay, and we're going to solve. So uh, the numbers are the following. We've got one half, the mass is 15 total, times um, uh, V squared, which is our 2.95 squared, plus U elastic, which is one half, the K is 1,000. Um, this initial X position is 0 0.098 squared, plus gravitational potential energy, which is mg, so that's 15 times 9.8. The height um, is the difference between the 0.147 and the 0.098. That's the height above this point that our initial point is. So that's 0.147 minus 0.098. Okay, that equals the kinetic energy max, which is one half times 15 V max squared plus the spring is compressed further. It's one half times a thousand times 0.147 squared. Okay, if you plug and chug, the only thing we don't know there is V max. The V max that I got when I did this in my calculator, 2.98 meters per second, okay? So that's method one to find Vmax. Now, everything else that we're gonna find is only gonna take a moment. Um, I do wanna go through a second method with you though. So this is, and this is, this is the careful part, this is measuring everything from the unstretched spring position. If we do that, then you have to account for MGH, okay? Method two, and I'll let you be the judge which one you want to use. Method two is measuring everything from the new spring equilibrium position when these two masses are on here. In other words, we're going to measure everything from here, from this point right here. Okay? And if you measure delta x, the compression or expansion of the spring from this point, from this loaded equilibrium position, then you can ignore MGH. Um, in class, I gave you guys a paper that kind of talked about why we can do that. So basically, um, at this point, we're going to say that's zero spring potential energy. Okay, that's the equilibrium point for our spring. Okay, so if we do that, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And we'll call this method two, okay? And a couple quick notes on method two. So since we're measuring all the spring potential energy from this point, the equilibrium point when the masses are on there, we're ignoring MGH. Um, at point one, we're saying the spring is uh, displaced how far from this point? Well, it's the point 147 minus the point 098. That's the displacement of the spring from the equilibrium, this new equilibrium spot to here. So at this point, we have spring potential energy and the blocks are moving, we have kinetic. At point two here, we're calling that X is zero. So the only energy that exists there is the kinetic energy of the blocks, okay? So if we do that, we do the following. We say the elastic potential energy um, at the beginning plus the kinetic energy at the beginning equals the kinetic energy max. Um, at the beginning, we have one half K, which is a grand. Now here's the tricky part. X is the difference in the two values, 0.147 minus 0.098 squared, plus the kinetic energy of the blocks, which is one half 15, 2.95 squared, okay? And that equals the final kinetic energy, which is one half 15 V max squared. And if you plug and chug all these numbers into your calculator, you will also get a max velocity of 2.98 meters per second, just like we got before. So you've got a choice, and either one's fine. You either got to measure everything from here, Okay, in which case you do have to worry about MGH, or you can measure everything from the, the new 
equilibrium point of that spring. And if you do that, or in other words, the equilibrium of the loaded spring, if you do that, you can ignore MGH. So it's up to you, okay? Now, once we got the V max, uh, finding the other two things up here are quite easy. I'm gonna go ahead and erase um, this stuff here. So the total energy of the system, um, the easiest way to do that is to say, well, at this point here, it's only got kinetic energy if we're measuring the spring potential energy from this point. So in other words, when the, when the kinetic energy is a max, that's your total energy. So having said that, um, we do K at the max is 1 half little m plus big M uh, V max squared. That's our total energy in our system, and that's pretty easy. 1 half, 15, 2.98 squared, and you get the maximum kinetic energy, which is our total energy. Um, I got uh, 66. 0.6 joules, okay? So that was my, my maximum kinetic energy, which is also the total energy, okay? Um, to find the amplitude of the motion, I say, okay, well, if this thing, when it gets to here, it's got its max velocity, now it's gonna bob up and down from that point. Um, I'm gonna say the kinetic energy there equals the spring potential energy down here. And again, I'm measuring from this point. I'm calling that zero elastic potential energy. So at this point, we have only kinetic. When the, when the mass stops moving, we have only elastic potential. So I take my total energy and I say, well, when the mass is at one end, it's just elastic potential. So I say 66.6 .6 equals 1 half K, which is 1,000 amplitude squared. Okay, when I solve for this, I get an amplitude of 0.365 uh, meters. Okay, now a note on that. <laughs> um, a quick note on that. That means that when this, this mass is being dropped from four meters up, that's really high. When this thing hits, it's going to bob up and down. If that's zero, and this is 0.147, it's going to go way up here. So it's going to bob up and down and go actually above this point as it goes up back and forth. So, so there, there's an example of um, doing a, a little simple harmonic motion, including uh, energy conservation and momentum conservation, and exploring. There's, there's two different places that you can call zero uh, for potential energy. Depending on which location you pick, uh, you can you can ignore MGH if you say the loaded spring at that's the equilibrium point. So um, personally, I go with that method, but either one works. So hope that was helpful. Thank you.